So here's a, an atom uh, with two with a helium atom. We've got two electrons zinging around on the outside. And uh, from the photo of electric effect, we know that if we send in a photon that has enough energy, boop, right, this can get knocked off. Ooh, where'd it go? I got another one here just like it. All right. And then now it's free, it's free to go, everything's fine, right? And so this energy is enough to knock that off. And so the energy of that photon, where did that photon go? All right, so the energy of this photon, right, uh, which is HF, will, needs to be removed as the energy to remove from the, all right, and then some of that will turn into kinetic energy. But we know that if I send, let's pull this electron back, ah, boop, all right. If I send in a lower energy photon, such as this green one, it doesn't get knocked off. It doesn't have this much energy. But what happens? Because it can get absorbed. So if it comes in and gets absorbed, the electron doesn't get knocked all the way off. It can pop up to a higher energy level. And now, let's use a different color, or not. Now it can kind of be out here a little bit, and it's picked up some energy. It's not using the photoelectric effect, but it is being absorbed. And so then when it falls back down, um, boop, this electron then comes, or that photon then comes flying back out. There it goes. All right. So this is another energy state that this electron can sit in, provided the right photon comes in. If a different photon comes in, here this one doesn't, Here's a longer wavelength. The red one's a little bit lower energy. It's going to come in. Oh, can't make that jump, so it stays there, and that one continues on through like nothing has happened. No, I lost my lid. Here we go. So now let's take a look at this a little bit more. So the other energy levels. So let's say we're out here. Now the next place that it could go. Oh, I got wait. I can't send that up there yet. Here we go. All right, then that one can pop up. Now that it's here, the next energy state is somewhere like, say, right around here. Notice it's closer. That gap is a little bit more. That photon doesn't have to be as strong as to have as much energy to push that electron away. So I can send in my red one now, and then boop, it gets absorbed up. And then when it falls back down, falls back down to there. Kicks out the photon again. When it falls back down here, kicks out that photon again. And this is as far as it can fall. So this is called the ground state. And then these are excited states. Yay. So we talk about uh, something that's a little uh, farther along, but they have numbers associated with them. So the ground state has n equal 1. These are the uh, state numbers. So then the next one up would be n equals 2, and then this one would be n equals 3. So what does that mean? The ground state is n equals 1. The first excited state is n equals 2. The second excited state is n equals 3. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here, Mike. All right. So now let's take another atom. Uh, let's just make this one. Here's my little. So there's my. Right, I'm gonna sprinkle some. There we go. There's my electron. It's hanging out over here. Here's the ground state. So to go to the next state, here's n equals one. I need to pick up. I'm just going to draw a part of it here. To go to there, I need some energy. There's n equals 1, or this is n equals 2. Now to go to my next one, this is n equals 3. Go to the next one, n equals 4. And this one's just a little bit closer. You can keep going, and these are all different ways that you can, these are all different places for the electron to exist because it exists in a quantum thing where it, it's either here, it's either in number one or in number two or in number three. It's not in between. So let's take a chunk of that. Let's just draw it like this. Because that's the Paul, the part I'm really interested in. So now instead of drawing, here's my electron again, let's put it at the ground state. Ooh, that's right there at the bottom. Ground. So here is n equals one. Bring it, we have to send in a photon. Where's my photon? 
There's my photon. It's going to come in. It's going to bump it up to this state. So here's n equals 2 and n equals 3. n equals 4. Now for hydrogen, there are numbers, there are energies that are that are equated to this. Right? As we look back at that photon that comes in, right, has some energy related to it. So that energy is from the photon, and it's going to come in to here and remove this and move this uh, electron up. So the energy, this energy is HF. And what it's going to do is it's going to change energy states. So I started out in one, and let's let's go to two. So that's going to give me my cha ooh, change in energy. Let's put it there. So energy final minus energy initial. I started out at n equals one. So HF equals. I went to two e two minus e one. So now that's nice and simple. I need some energy to transfer across there. Now let's get some numbers involved. Now because this is let's back out a little bit. Because of the way that it's set up and it's absorbing energy coming in, that means the energy of the electron here, we're going to call it the ground state. It can't go any lower. We call the energy, excuse me, this is the lowest energy state, but it has energy out here. But out here is kind of free and floating around. All of these energies are negative. So for the hydrogen, this energy has, it's negative 13, some, uh, somebody figured this out. So the energy associated with this one is negative 13.1 electron volts, negative 3.4 electron volts, negative 1.51 electron volts, negative 0.85 electron volts. Now these keep going and keep going and keep going and get closer and closer together, so much so that at n equals infinity, the energy is zero. So kind of this electron out here, the free electron has no energy. So then when it falls in, it kind of loses energy. The, the atom is like some sort of uh, energetic well. It's like a sink of energy. Um, so let's find out, let's go between, let's find out what the wavelength of light or uh, wavelength of light to figure this, to go from what, what wavelength do I have to bring in to, uh, to get that electron to bump from there to there. Well, first we're talking wavelengths, so that turns into hc over lambda. Energy 2 is negative 3.4 minus negative 16 or 13.6. So hc is, when I looked at I know this by heart already, electron volt nanometers with the wavelength. And 13.6 from 3.4, that becomes 10, oh shoot, 10.2. Uh, electron volts. And notice my negatives kind of all pass away, and I have a positive value now because energy is being absorbed into, when this comes in, this energy is going, energy is being absorbed. So now 1240 electron volt nanometers divided by 10.2 electron volts. It's going to give you my wavelength, and that turns out to be, oh shoot, where did I put that? I'm going to have to do the math in my head. Uh, ooh, calculator. On, on, all right, so I've got 1240 divided by 10.2, and that gives me 121.5 nanometers. That's a pretty far into the UV, but now you can see the electron photon comes in. This gets popped up. It moves from moves from here to there.